Hi there. This is the Winter Owl. This is a Let's Play of IL-2 Storm of the Cliffs of Dover. Uh, I am rotating in place here in a supposedly supposed to be a stationary aircraft. Hey, that's kind of cool. It's like I'm on a carousel. Hey, look at that. Game has a few bugs in it. It's cool. I think this this is supposed to represent we have some wind and the airplane's weather veining into the wind. It's not exactly realistic. <laughs> But we can make it work. Yeah, this is a Let's Play of um, Spitfire Dawn. It's a campaign made by a guy, uh, call, his online name is DF Lion. Uh, user made campaign, series of missions. Uh, the first mission here is just basic flight training in a Tiger Moth. Hey, let's look at the outs exterior view. I changed, the, I changed the skin away from the default because. Come on, man, it's red. Red airplanes go faster or look cooler or something, right? Yeah. Tiger Moth. 1930s biplane. Uh, used as a just basic flight training aircraft by the RAF for decades, really. Uh, this, they were still using Tiger Moth into the 1950s. I think Tiger Moth looks cool. Alright, let's see if we can get it started. I was practicing this earlier. First off, let's turn those magnetos on. Got some magneto switches out there. There's down here we have the fuel cock. British really love calling this thing the cock. I think it's a shutoff valve, but they like cocks, and that's just all I'm going to say about it. Alright, so we want to crack that mixture just a little. Oops, too far. Come on. Mixture open a little bit, throttle open a little bit. All right, I think, and contact. Clear, clear prop. That's what you'd say if this is a real airplane. Engine caught for a couple seconds, but it did not keep running. All right, all right. Yeah, this game features what they call complex engine management. <laughs> All right, let's see how many times I can fail to start the engine in a Tiger Moth. Excellent. Okay, okay, let's fiddle around with these controls. Some complex engine management. This actually isn't so unrealistic. If you're ever around a light aircraft, uh, every single manufacturer does things totally different on how to start the damn engine. Ooh, ooh. Oh, we got a success here. We got it running. Absolutely. This is excellent. Okay. <laughs> oh, hell. Damn it. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah, the very same features that make aircraft engines um, designed so that they're fairly reliable to stay running in the air. I just killed the engine again. My God. Uh, the same features all... Um, makes them quite often just a real pain in the ass to start. It's not like a car at all. Well, I guess it kind of depends upon the car. I mean, well, I've lost count. How many times have I failed to start this thing now? Okay, is it running? This sounds good. This looks good. I'm just not going to touch anything for a while. Let this, let this thing warm up. It needs to warm up for a long time. Yeah, it kind of de depends on the car. Years back, I had a 79 Honda Civic. This really reminds me of that. That thing was a real pain in the ass to start, too. All right, cool. Hey, let's look around some scenery. Uh, there aren't any bad guys. There aren't any uh, fire and bombs and guns and blood in this, in this particular mission. This one's just basic flight training. Hey, this guy's starting his engines up. Um, I don't, I don't even know what kind of airplane that is. It's British. It's got a gun turret back there. Previous to uh, World War II, between the two world wars, uh, the British especially, they, they had this design philosophy of uh, putting this gun turrets on everything. They thought that was going to be, that was going to be the, the big thing for aerial combat. Let's see if we can get a closer look at it. Uh, there's the Blenheim. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know what the 
this is. It's like an like observer plane or something. Kind of funky looking. It's all right. All yeah, right, we're sitting here. We're letting our engine warm up. What is this over here? Leading edge slats. You can read some of the placards inside of the cockpit here. If I can get my view to settle down. Auto slots. Let's unlock those auto slots. That sounds like a good idea. Let's have my compass. Read the compass in here. The white crossbar. The white crossbar points to north. So let's set this so it agrees with that. And there you see we're we weather veined around and we're sitting at about a um, heading at two nine five. There we are. This guy here, supposedly that's me. That isn't actually what my haircut looks like. This guy here, it's my instructor. You're not going to hear anything out of him. He's just going to sit there and be totally silent. Your instructor will not ever advise you, and if he does speak, we would urge you to disregard any of his advice. All right. Yeah, we're still waiting for the engine to warm up. Oh, wasn't that just awesome? Where'd it go? That's so you can get out if you want to. Uh, okay, where were we on the map? Here we are. I set this map up before we started in our training field of Up Avon, Up Avon, Oop Oop. I, you know, I don't, I don't speak British. I'm an ignorant American. Um, it's, I'm going to call it Up Avon, and, you know, if that's too horribly wrong, I will count on some, uh, you know, more legitimately British person to correct me. Notice that if we get too far away from Up Avon, and we're flying around here, things to take a look at. We've got a little town here. We've got a distinctive river, and river forks right here, and a town right at the fork of a river. We've got another little bit of buildings here, kind of a distinctive shape of the forest right there. So these are all things you can use to help us find our way back to Up Avon. Should we get lost? I'll try real hard not to get lost. All right, let's add a little bit more mixture. You can see the controls moving when I do that. It's one of those British things that got it all backwards, where you move the controls backwards to get more throttle or more mixture. Everybody knows you push you push things forward. If you want more, let's set our elevator trim up because we're going to be taking off before too very long. All right, I wonder if my engine's warm enough now. We don't actually have an engine temperature gauge in the Tiger Moth. Can it judge by its behavior whenever you add a little bit of throttle? Very, very gently. Ooh, we have an increase in RPM. Eh, it's running a little bit rough. It still doesn't want to go yet. I'll let it warm up here for a little while. Yeah, Tiger Moth takes takes a while to warm up. I really enjoy... I practice this a little bit. I really enjoy working with the Tiger Moth uh, because the, the engine is so finicky. It's hard to start. It's hard to keep running after you've got it started. Uh, it's hard to tell whenever it's time to go. I, I don't know. I, I like it. I like it. It's temperamental. She's she's a gentle... She's a, she's a proper, gentle lady. That's what she is. I saw one of these in real life once, years ago. A buddy of mine was... Uh, we were traveling someplace. He's going to go buy a antique Piper Cub, J3 Cub. Uh, and the guy and I went with him just to go take a look at the airplane that he was thinking about buying. And the guy who was selling the Cub, he had a Tiger Moth in absolutely pristine vintage condition. Just every every bit of it was absolutely beautiful. And he was just there. Hey, while we're standing around talking about airplanes, looking at airplanes, you want to see my Tiger Moth? I'm like, hell yeah, we want to see your Tiger Moth. Uh, he pulled out of a out of a hangar and started it up. 
yeah, it was cool. The thing, the thing was just absolutely shiny, flawless. I remember being surprised that the uh, propeller had no twist to it. Modern propellers, you know, in order to be more aerodynamically efficient, have have a, a, a twist shape to the blade. But that one was just totally flat, flat as a board. Can we advance our throttle a little bit more? Give it a little more mix. Oh, she didn't like it. Throttle back, throttle back. Don't kill her. Oop, we're starting to get a slight RPM increase there. Come on. <laughs> Come on, baby. We want to fly. Enough of this sitting around talking about airplanes and looking at airplanes. Many thanks to DF Lion for giving me permission. I started to do a Let's Play and I thought, now wait a minute. Uh, user made campaign. If I go and I start recording this guy's work, what he put together and, and post it up on YouTube, uh, he might not like it. That's a potential spoiler. Ooh, there's an RPM increase. That's what we're looking for. Let's see what we got here. So, send him a message. And he is enthusiastic about it. Okay, I think we got a runner here. Where's that runway? Is it back over here somewhere? <laughs> 